Hey everybody, it's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. How are ya? I'm doing pretty good. Today we are going to be doing some Brent Christensen updates. His penalty phase for his trial began July 8th. It's going to be a very emotional phase of this trial and I want to just go over some of the highlights of it. Uh, keep in mind this is a federal trial so there's no cameras or anything like that so I'm just kind of reviewing people's notes, uh, reporters and whatnot, and going over that aspect of it. So, without any further ado, Let's review. Okay, so the first article I'm going to go over just kind of talks about some of the highlights of the day. So again, this the penalty phase began July 8th. As we all know, he was found guilty. He admitted this. There is no question. His defense team pretty much dialed it in. I think waiting to get to this phase of the trial <clears throat> because his life is on the line. And we'll see. So jurors uh, on Monday began to see some testimony from her, the victim's name is Ying Ying Zhang, and jurors on Monday began seeing some of the testimony from her fiancé, as well as some of her best friends. It was very emotional. Uh, her fiancé said that she's the best girl he'd ever met, and they had planned to get married. You know, this was a very successful young lady, had come a long ways, and she was going to go places, and it's, it's always unfortunate when this happens. His defense attorney, Julie Brain, said, whatever jurors decide, Christensen will die in prison, either the end of his natural life or by execution. And she stated this during her open opening statement remarks. He will be punished for his crime severely. Your guilty verdict will make sure of that. Now, you know, we've heard these exact lines in the Tim Jones Jr. trial. And one thing I think is really interesting, I mean, you almost have to wonder, are they watching each other's videos and stuff? You know, but it's interesting how they take this tactic because... Again, when there's no question that he did this, absolutely 100%. He has been heinous about it from the word go. He is still victimizing her family. He hasn't told her where the body is. So, you know, they're trying to sit here and say, you know, you're going to punish him severely. You know, your guilty verdict has already done that. It's mandated. He's never leaving prison for the rest of his life. You know, that's a severe punishment. <clears throat> so they're trying to reiterate this. Now, again, if it was me, I would want to, I would want the death penalty. I wouldn't want to sit in prison the rest of my life. So I'd be like, bring it on you know so i mean but this guy's cocky enough he probably wants to stay alive for the rest of his life now the assistant uh, the assistant u.s attorney james nelson called the kidnapping and slaying of song cold calculated cruel and months in the making and he said that christensen was plotting to kill someone even as zong was preparing to travel to the united states from china and you know her body still hasn't been recovered and the assistant attorney said that that has created anguish for her family obviously her mother her whole family is distraught and her mother i mean can barely even be in the room uh, there's not going to be any pro no proper burial no closure anything like that uh, Nelson also read a quote that Zong had written in her journal. Uh, Life is too short to be ordinary. The quote was one of the last things written in the journal before Zong disappeared. And he, Nelson states, when she wrote this, Ying Ying had no idea how short her life would be. And I mean, she didn't. It's, it's very sad. While Zong's fiance was in the courtroom, interviews with close friends and college roommates of the victim were shown on video and translated from Chinese to, to English. I'm going to go more into some of the aspects of these videos as well here in just a few minutes. Uh, now, friends described her as a free spirit and warm-hearted person. One friend described how excited Zong was about uh, the woman's pregnancy and how Zong had spoken about her desire to one day become a mother herself. Uh, prosecutors also played a video of Zong singing the pop song Complicated by Avril Lavigne in English. I think we all love that song. So, you know, this just was a great girl, you know, a young lady, I'm sorry, uh, and who left this earth in a horrible fashion. Now, another part that his defense is trying to work into this are mitigating factors to try and keep him out of, you know, off the death penalty. Uh, and that includes a mother who was treated for severe depression, a history of mental illness on both sides of the family. Uh, Christensen displayed symptoms of depression and anxiety throughout his life and saw professional counseling for his substance abuse problems they said so again we see all these typical things pulled into this of depression substance abuse things of this nature that you know a lot of people have and they don't go out and do bad things like this and this is where you know an insanity plea is an insanity plea and you have to really you know be 
eligible for that. And he, in my opinion, he is absolutely not eligible for anything of that nature. A lot of people have these issues and they don't go out and do these heinous things. And now his defense also brought up the fact that, you know, his he started to struggle academically when his marriage fell apart. And what happened next was a four-year battle between Brent and his demons that little by little he lost. And unfortunately, you know, this is the whole thing. When these people sit here and describe this, oh, he went through all this. Well, you know, unfortunately, his issues poured out onto, you know, Miss Ying Ying Zong over here. Now, his father and brother are expected to testify in court on Tuesday, which should be very interesting. Now, also to keep in mind, Illinois abolished capital punishment in 2011 and put a mortarium on the practice 11 years before that. But federal prosecutors can still seek the death penalty in states that have abolished capital punishment. Uh, for example, the Boston Marathon bomber, he was sentenced to death in 2015 in a federal trial in Massachusetts, which has banned the practice at the state level. So that's how they're able to get this. Uh, now, it has been more than like 13 years since someone was sentenced to death in a federal courtroom in Illinois. In 2006, a judge affirmed a jury sentence of death for Dr. Ronald Mikos, who was charged uh, or who was convicted of killing a formal patient slated to testify against him in a Medicare fraud trial. Wow. Uh, and he's still in death row in a maximum security prison in Indiana. So that's a little bit of interesting news there. So, I mean, as you see, like, they can still slide in this death penalty. And honestly, I think he's going to get the death penalty. I think the family wants the death penalty at this point. He's jerked them around so much. You know, and this whole little facade of, well, I offered to show the body. I mean, that body is gone, unfortunately. They will never get that back. And I think for her family, they were like, if you could give us your, her remains and point us to them and their remains, we would be willing to deal. But because of that, absolutely not. You know, I mean you know, take him out back, you know, go ahead and fire old Sparky up. Now we're going to look over this next article here. Uh, and this is prosecutors conducted secret Chinese interviews for death hearing defense says. And so this is about those videotapes. Remember I did an update on that where they didn't want the videotape shown. Well, this shines some more light onto that. And so what they're saying is that federal prosecutors conducted a secret foreign investigation resulting in secret interviews, according to his attorneys. Now, late Sunday, they did a filing that described the allegedly covertly gathered tapes uh, that the government has resisted sharing despite collecting it since at least October 2018, primarily from China and assisted by Chinese law enforcement. So again, this is all basically tapes of people that knew her testifying, you know, for this phase of the trial. Like, defense attorneys contend that they only learned of the government's secret foreign investigation following the culpability phase when the government disclosed hours of videotapes and voluminous transcripts and accompanying exhibits of Mandarin-speaking witnesses who will not appear at trial. So, again, they went and interviewed all these people in the likelihood that he was convicted. We can use this stuff at, you know, the penalty phase or whatever. So, and they're saying, oh my God, this is like, apparently it's hours and hours and hours of, you know, testimony, which again speaks to the type of person she was. A lot of people cared for her. Uh, now, the defense is asking that the videos be banned from presentation to the jury, claiming that the use of such previously undisclosed secret videos would violate his constitutional rights and they can't cross-examine these witnesses. Now, in a particular thing, I could understand that. Like, if it was for the guilt phase, I'd be like, well, wait a second. But to me, I almost, and again, I don't, I'm not a legal expert, but just my opinion is, like, he's not even trying to say he didn't do this. You know, he did this. He's very proud of it. He's gloated. So this aspect of it, I'm like, well, you know, it is what it is. You know, they're testifying about their friend, their loved one. So, I mean, would, would you really need to cross-examine them? Would you really cross-examine someone on the stand like that? You know, I mean, come on. But the judge ruled against Christensen. Uh, the judge said that they could edit down the versions of seven interviews with Zong's friends in China to be played for the jury. So, and also it's probably going to save some time and stuff because I don't know how long these are or whatever, but I'm sure that they need to kind of condense things any which way. Now, the government, these videos are intended to establish what type of young woman Zong was and what her loss will mean to her Chinese friends. So see, this isn't like establishing guilt or motive or anything. This is literally what I call a character witness type situation. 
Now, there's going to be numerous other recordings played during the death penalty phase of his trial, including a video made last weekend with the victim's mother and jailhouse phone calls made by Christensen aimed at illustrating his lack of remorse. Now, he's already shown us his lack of remorse, y'all. I mean, my God. And let me tell you what, that video with his mother in it, or with her mother in it, I apologize, is going to bring the house down. That woman, I was nervous for her health. She was so distraught. I mean, she couldn't even be in the same room with this monster, and I don't blame her. And so, I mean, this video will bring the house down. If somebody has a doubt about the death penalty, they're going to be like, no, go on, fire spark, you know, get him out back. I mean, literally. So that's kind of all the updates I have right now. So again, I'm filming this on Tuesday. So probably by tomorrow, there will be some more updates that come out about Tuesday's information. Because again, keep in mind, this is a federal case. We don't have access to the information as it's coming out. So that is it. Uh, we will see how long this goes on for and what ends up happening. Uh, also, check out the description button. There's lots of links down there. I've got a new podcast going, so check that out. And there's lots of ways to follow me on social media and whatnot. Uh, be sure you click the bell if you want to no be notified of when my videos come out. I appreciate you choosing to hang out with me. And I will talk to you all soon.